professor of political science at Tennessee Technological University in the U.S. and the secretary general of the EU TCC, uh, EU Turkey Civic Commission, Michael Gunther. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for uh, accepting uh, our interview invitation this time. Yeah, good to see you again, Aram. Thank you. So the uh, our main topic is the anniversary of the February 15 international conspiracy. Uh, the uh, anniversary of 15 is approaching. So what is your comments on the international conspiracy on this 22nd year of the international intelligence services kidnap uh, Kurdish leader uh, Mr. Abdullah Öcalan? Well, I've been thinking about this, of course, and in retrospect, maybe Ojalan should have gone to the mountains in northeastern Iraq with the other senior leaders and PKK guerrillas instead of going to uh, Western Europe at that time. Uh, history would have turned out very different. But I don't know if that would have been for the better because as a Turkish prisoner, Ojalan's trial and almost it's been almost a quarter of a century of imprisonment has created it's created a great deal of sympathy and recognition for the PKK. Also, the PKK has thrived and grown without Ojalan's daily hands-on leadership. And I, and I sometimes even wonder if Ojalan uh, were uh, freed. Uh, what kind of world would he be coming into? It's been, as I said, almost a quarter of a century. Uh, would that really work at this point? So much has changed. Anyway, I, I also uh, have been thinking how Mr. Ojalan's incarceration is not really unique. It's just clearly the uh, most publicized. But literally thousands of Kurdish politicians, uh, HDP party members, uh, pro-Kurdish and civil liberties uh, leaders in Turkey have also been in prison. For example, just today, across my desk, a, uh, a, a notice about uh, MP Leyland Gulen and her situation. Despite the CPTs and uh, many international institutions reports regarding the isolation uh, this uh, this violation still continues. Um, Mr. Ojalan is not allowed to meet neither with his lawyers, his family, and uh, with politicians as he did in the past during the peace process, actually. So uh, what is the reason for the insistence in isolation? What kind of action should be take, taken against it? And how can this... Uh, which is a uh, uh, circle uh, can be overcome. Well, of course, I'm not a Turkish policeman, so I, I, I really don't know. But I would speculate that at least in part, Turkey, Turkey is afraid of Ojalan. Uh, but remember, uh, Aram, there was a brief time uh, called the Kurdish opening from 2013 to 2015. Uh, when it seemed that Turkey and the PKK might actually reach an accommodation. However, you know, in retrospect, looking back upon it, Turkey, I don't think Turkey was ever really willing to have a genuine compromise with the PKK. Uh, basically, uh, it was window dressing and uh, Turkey wanted the PKK to just give up the struggle. So uh, what happened, as you remember, the parliamentary elections on June 7th, 2015. Uh, the pro-Kurdish HDP party gained enough seats in parliament to deny Erdogan's AKP party a, a majority. And at that point, uh, uh, Erdogan turned on the PKK and the, and the fighting resumed. Uh, and Ojalan turned toward the MHP, the National Action Party of Devet Bacheli, the ultra Turkish nationalist for the alliance to keep himself in power. So I think it's difficult to conceive Erdogan at this point breaking the alliance with the MHP Bacheli 
and going back to somehow negotiating with the PKK because Turkish politics are basically nationalist and uh, it's the alliance with Bacili that keeps Erdogan in power, not some type of an agreement with uh, the PKK. A professor of political science at Tennessee Technological University in the U.S. and the Secretary General of the EU TCC Commission, Michael Gunther. Thanks for accepting our interview invitation and for your comments today. Okay, good luck to you. Thank you.